Hi, this is Misha, and I've gone over in more detail Romulan ships and Klingon, and now it's time to revisit Borg ships. In a way, kind of the Sesame Street type of ships, because they're all more or less basic geometric shapes. <laughs> we're going to start with this vessel here. This is the Under Assimilation Arctic One, of course done by Eagle Moss. I think they're probably the only folks who've ever done this. And we're going to start with this one for a couple of reasons. One, it's kind of the most interesting of the Eagle Moss Borg ships, at least tactically speaking, from what I've read. Maybe visually it's a little kind of monochromatic and whatnot, but trust me, feeling it, it's got a lot to feel and it's a really nice model. Even though it took me a long ass time to figure out how it went on the stand. This is from Regeneration, a season 2 episode in Enterprise. The only Borg episode, which is probably good, they only did one, and it was actually a very good episode, and kind of a return to form for the Borg in a lot of ways. But what do we have here? The reason that I say this is a good place to start is this is kind of a proto-Borg ship. As have direct directors kind of commented, and frankly, as I kind of thought, even when I was watching Next Generation and Voyager and yep, everything else, Borg ships aren't constructed as much as they're kind of artificially grown. So they start off as an alien ship or something... And then they're augmented and assimilated and added onto, eventually forming into something else. A cube or a sphere or, I don't know, I guess it depends how many Andy Warhols they um, maybe assimilated with it. Maybe it'll evolve into a banana, I don't know. But this ship was an early, in the early stages. And it started off as this vessel here. Another Eagle Moss model, a slightly more recent one. This is the original. Earth survey or transport or research craft. And this one was Arctic 1. It's about 50 meters long. It had research bays and seemed capable of accommodating a few different people, you know, a few people, maybe, you know, one to two dozen, depending on the mission profile and, of course, equipment on board. And I had a flight crew of, I believe, around three. So, here is the ship as we saw it. It's got these kind of skids underneath, for sk or skis I should say. It was warp capable, but not fast. I believe it was only capable of about warp 1.8. So, let people say, well, why would this need warp being inside the solar system? The thing is, even inside the solar system, warp 1.8, you really would want to go warp speed or close to it to get from planet to planet inside the solar system, at least in a reasonable time period. So, it makes sense to me. Plus, you know, emergencies and whatnot. Especially if this was, at least this whole design, doubled as a transport craft. Kind of might have just been there for whatever reason. But it did not have weapons. And it had no defense against Borg. So when it found a couple of drones in the Antarctic ice 
it quickly was turned into this. It assimilated the crew, then assimilated the ship, and took off from Earth. And mean, meanwhile, Enterprise, blah blah blah, called back to Earth, blah blah blah. This intercepted a, a Tarkalian ship and took parts from it and augmented the assimilated Arctic One, eventually producing, at the time when it was destroyed, a max warp of just under 5. I believe it was around 4.9. So they had already upgraded the warp. They also added weaponry. They added a proton burst weapon. Kind of a ad hoc. It sounds like maybe they added, you know, did that. They also added a cutting beam. So, the, kind of the classic Borg cutting beam. Probably it was modified from maybe something, a, a drill or some kind of cutting implement on the survey craft. And of course, they increased its mass and armor alongside. Now, the Enterprise destroyed it, barely. But if it was allowed to continue to evolve and grow, it would have turned into one of the other Borg ships, I'm sure. So it's a, it's a neat evolutionary step in their construction method. Now, that was never set on screen, but again, I think it was always kind of the intent of the writers. And it just really fits with what we know about the Borg, how they assimilate people. I just don't see the Borg having shipyards as such. I could be wrong, but it's all fiction, and it just makes sense that they would kind of grab existing ships and do their thing. As far as the model from Eagle Moss here... I really like it. It's one of the most interesting Borg ships. It's just an interesting ship that really no one else was likely to make. And at first I thought it was a little silly that they were also doing the uh, the Arctic One unassimilated. But having them side by side, it's, it's kind of neat to see a, a before and after here. So why not? They certainly made more unusual choices for uh, models. And in really, in-universe, this was the first Borg ship, at least chronologically speaking, that humans, the Federation, encountered in 2152. Two, I believe is when that happens so this also fits well as the first ship in our closer look at the Borg fleet as it were this is predominantly of course polymer because of all the sticky out bits but it does have a metal core the uh, unassimilated version here is much uh, more metal this whole center section is metal with just the skids really being the polymer, so it's actually a very neat model. I like both. Like I said, I'm just kind of going over the alien ships, giving a, a closer look. Why not? And despite its flaws, I've actually been a fan of Enterprise. They started really find their feet towards the middle of season two, in my opinion. This was one of the first truly good episodes, and again, I thought it really did the Borg justice after Voyager. Um, we'll just say had fun with them. I can't say I hated the Voyager episodes with Borg, but they really lost a lot of credibility, in my opinion. But... That is a topic for an upcoming video in this series, so we'll stop there with this one because there's just not much more to say about it. If you could like, share, and subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it. Check out some of the other videos if you like, or, you know, check out our main channel over at Mishiko. Why not? Well, this is Misha, and I will catch you very soon next time.